The passion to learn, the will to endure, and a willingness to adapt are traits common to some of the greatest heroes in fighting game history. But for Daigo Umahara, they are commandments that have led to an indelible competitive legacy. The man, now known as the Beast, was not born that way. Born in 1981 in Aomori Prefecture, Japan, Daigo's family moved back to Tokyo when he was in the second grade. As a youth in the early 90s, Daigo took an interest in fighting games, which were very much still in their infancy. In Japan, an interest in fighting games usually meant arcades. それで初めてそのアーケードゲームっていうのを見て、まあすごい感動したというか、当時の家庭用のゲームとの差がすごかったんで、でそれからそれがきっかけでしたね。そこからゲームセンターに行くようになりました。The hot title of the day was Street Fighter 2, a follow up to Capcom's original 1987 Street Fighter release. But in the arcade, the young Daigo, faced with long lines for Capcom's newest title and unable to stay into the late hours, opted instead to play SMK's Fatal Fury. He would eventually find the glory of competition when he began playing Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition. What he did not find, however, was natural talent. はそんな特に思うことはなかったですけど、まあ、ただ同級生の人たちよりも自分の方が熱心にやってた好きでやってたんで、はいうんまあ、自分の方が上手くなるだろうなと思いながらやってましたけど。While he had been drawn in by Street Fighter and started with Fatal Fury, the game that would put Daigo on the competitive landscape was Vampire Hunter, part of the series that is known as Darkstalkers in the West. And his devotion to the game and passion to improve would culminate in a feat that has since achieved near legendary status. If you've ever been in an arcade, you know there's one law above all others winner stays on. At the Akihabara Sega Game Center, the young Daigo managed an impressive feat, stringing together 286 victories in one of the arcade's Darkstalkers machines. The game could actually only count to 256 wins, at which point it rolled over back to zero before Daigo tacked on a few more. He was eventually forced to leave when the game center closed, not because he had been defeated. Back before widespread internet adoption, feats like these were part of how a player's reputation spread. Daigo became known, if not by name, then at least as one of the local scene's bright stars, as the guy who had strung together nearly 300 wins in the arcade. As he continued to play Darkstalkers, Daigo's path would eventually cross with Shinya Anuki. Onuki had heard of Daigo's legend, but in 1997, Daigo would show him. The two men, who would later become known as two of Japan's five gods of fighting games, faced off in the grand final of the Gamest Cup National Vampire Savior Tournament. <laughs> The Bishaman mirror match went in favor of Daigo, who claimed his first major tournament victory. Daigo would then move on to Street Fighter Alpha 3. In 1998, an official national tournament was held for the title. And who else would meet him in the finals but Anuki, and again in a mirror match. However, this time, both players were playing Viism Akuma. <laughs> Though he triumphs over his domestic rival in Japan, Daigo had a final challenge in the tournament, one that would send him to the United States for the first time. In San Francisco, California, Daigo was set to battle the American champion, Mr. Street Fighter himself, Alex Valle. And despite facing one of Japan's first challengers to the West, Valle was pretty confident about his chances. To an early lead, Daigo would show that Japan was not to be trifled with, winning his first international competition and breaking into the Western mainstream FGC at the same time. In the early 2000s, the fighting game landscape became extremely varied. Though Daigo stuck to 2D fighters, he played a variety of titles. He took first at both the 2000 national tournaments for Street Fighter Alpha 3 and Capcom vs. SNK. 
but became perhaps best known for his Street Fighter 2 Turbo Play. As the fighting game community grew, tournaments rose to accommodate the demand. In Japan, the legendary Super Battle Opera series of tournaments began in 2003, while in the United States, the Evolution Championship series grew out of a tournament series known as Battle by the Bay, renaming to EVO in 2002. Daigo's legend grew with him as he proved to be among the best in the world. Managing a second place in CVS2 and Guilty Gear X2 at SBO 2003, and taking first in the 3v3 Super Turbo Tournament. At EVO 2003, he took first place at the Super Turbo event, and second at Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. But Daigo's profile as a fighting game god was about to burst from the confines of the FGC, becoming something that even the fighting game community could not contain. At EVO 2004, Daigo's match against Justin Wong in the Third Strike Losers Finals exemplified his unceasing will to win while simultaneously inspiring a new generation of fighting game players. Matched up against Justin's Chun-Li, Daigo found himself so far behind in round 3 of their first game that even blocking Chun-Li's Hoyuku Sen super art would chip his Ken out. Justin decided to test the beast. The beast did not back down. All 16 hits of the super art and using his own to seal the deal, Daigo's feat was a perfect example of the beast's legendary tenacity. Not only had Daigo put in the work to learn the timing, he did it in a high pressure, competitive situation. So when you hear the stories of how great he is and then he pulled off something that ridiculous, the most ridiculous thing, and um, that definitely cemented Daigo as like the hero of the FGC. The clip, known in the West as EVO Moment 37, remains the most popular highlight in fighting game history and was a gateway for a lot of new players. I had a lot of friends who started playing Third Strike after that, explicitly because of that moment. They thought it was so great. Despite his second place finish at EVO 2004, Daigo's interest in fighting games began to wane, and by the fall of 2004, he had mostly withdrawn from the community, fearing that further growth had become impossible given the uncertainty surrounding his chosen path. Still, the fires of competition burned inside the beast, and he dove into the world of Mahjong. But the same thing that had stopped Daigo from continuing in fighting games became a crystal clear possibility for his future in Mahjong. Daigo instead threw himself into elder care as a career and soon began to consider opportunities for further advancement at the nursing home. But despite finding the work fulfilling in its own way, he would later call this period after leaving both fighting games and Mahjong the lowest point of his life. But the release of Street Fighter 4 in Japanese arcades sucked him back in. It had been nearly nine years since the release of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, and the new release had reawakened the competitive fighting game community. At first, he treated it more as a hobby, heading to the arcade between work shifts. But the thrill of competition had once again gripped the beast, and challengers, hearing that he was back in the arcades, lined up for the chance to face off. Before long, Daigo was competing in national tournaments and even traveled to the United States for an exhibition match against the American, Korean, and Japanese champions. He defeated Punko, Ayo, and Justin Wong at that tournament. Despite not intending to make the trip to EVO originally, Daigo knew that he had to attend the event's first street Fighter 4 tournament. In his book, Daigo notes that no one event led to him being approached for the pro contract, but his performance at EVO in 2009 must have played some part in that outcome. There, at the first EVO Grand Finals for Street Fighter 4, he once again found himself opposite Justin Wong. After defeating him earlier in the bracket, he had fought his way back to a faded confrontation. After an initial game where Daigo ruled over Justin's Rufus, Justin switched to Balrog and managed to reset the bracket. Oh 
That is not the championship, that is only a new set. With the crowd firmly behind him against the Japanese legend, Justin had a final set to claim victory for America. But Daigo had other plans. Last punch. Oh, now Daigo threatening again with those spoken attacks. Commentator talking directly to the players now. Oh no, it's all gonna come right down to this. Daigo, oh, Daigo Umehara takes it. And Justin must admit, that was an excellent match and the crowd is on its feet. In April 2010, Daigo Umahara became the first official Japanese pro gamer after signing a sponsorship deal with Mad Cats. The Beast had well and truly returned. And fighting games had returned with him. The release of Street Fighter 4 rekindled interest in the genre like never before, and the scene experienced a renaissance that would attract a whole new generation of competitors. Despite the newcomers and old guard, Daigo remained a strong competitor, also winning EVO 2010's Super Street Fighter 4 tournament with a grand finals win over Ricky Ortiz. But the switch to the game's arcade edition left him looking for new answers. He abandoned Ryu, the character that he had played since Street Fighter IV's release, and that had always been his favorite, in favor of Yun. It ultimately didn't work out as he placed fourth at EVO 2011. In 2012, with the game's newest update, he switched back to Ryu and saw some success. But it was Ultra Street Fighter IV and the addition of Evil Ryu that saw him return to form. After a relatively quiet 2013, the Beast took a number of high-profile events in 2014 and 2015. Though he fell short of an Evolution Championship, he did play second at Capcom Cup. Daigo spoke candidly in his book about how he had felt. In 2004, uncertain about whether he'd have the opportunities he needed to improve, but he also wrote that, while he did not need validation for his achievements, he had expected to see at least some recognition, some indication of a future. It's logical then that he donated his $60,000 winnings from Capcom Cup to the Evolution Scholarship Fund for the Department of Game Design at New York University. It was a way to help reduce that uncertainty for future players. While that helps in a practical way, Daigo's example, his dedication to improvement, his refusal to back down, has already set an example that remains relevant for every fighting game competitor. Whether you've just performed your first combo or you're in grand finals at Capcom Cup, his journey is one that any fighting game player can understand and relate to. Daigo now 36 years old, hasn't yet found the same level of success in Street Fighter V despite a switch from Ryu to Guile. But even so, counting him out is irresponsible. Ever since he was a kid, he really wanted to show that playing video games is something that you could excel at and was worth excelling at. He had both in-game and, and out-game impacts that I think have really been huge. And I believe a lot of fighting game people start fighting game because of him. We've seen what happens when Daigo is challenged. We felt each parry, heard the crowd roar. The Beast taught us that with the passion to learn and the will to keep going no matter what, a comeback is always possible. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content, be sure to hit that subscribe button.